Thank you again for having us to tea, Mrs. P. Everything was just lovely. Except my scone was a bit stale. Pay no attention to Freddy Jane. Oh, it's all right. I know my cooking has suffered something awful this past year. But with no one left to cook for, <laughs> you don't cook to an empty table. Sophie and then my Henry last fall. That double blow nearly did me in, my dears. Sweet Jane, please continue to unburden yourself if it helps. Let us be your sympathetic ear. You've suffered much. Uh, when we lost our Sophie, I had Henry by my side to pick up the pieces and move forward together. But now I find myself alone. There's my Diana, of course, but, but Henry... God never set a finer man on this earth than Henry Pembroke. He was my rock. Lord. What do I know of lilacs and dirt? I mean, Henry was going to take care of all that. Henry always... Now I've been left to muddle through as best I can. I'd rather run a restaurant. Still, you have a friend in us, and as you said, there's Diana right next door to you. She must be at least a comfort, if not a help. She's always been a comfort to her mother, as Diana. My girl certainly has her mother's temper. Oh, she may need it. You know, Mrs. P, I'm not one to tell tales, but your family wasn't the first or the last to be terrorized by the Reverend in his crusade for wealth and power. Ah, yes, the Bats family, I am aware. You, you needn't elaborate. No, not the Bats. I speak of my own entanglement with the Reverend Gaumont. Your own entanglement? Well, do go on. You know that glass I had? You remember that? Well, I shot him. Right in broad daylight at the 1909 Expo. Bullet grazed the temple. Thought he was dead for half a heartbeat. Turns out he was only stunned, but he lost his eye as a result. It ruined the expo. Glory! Whatever tempted you to take such bold action against such a man? Like you, Mrs. P, he took someone from me. Someone that I love dearly. And I had to settle the score. So you see, Jane... We've both suffered similar loss at the hand of the late Reverend. The police called it self-defense on my part. I can sense there's much you're holding back, Freddy. Still smirking waters certainly do run deep. Perhaps I'll share the rest someday. Well, golly, would you look at that? What, look at what? There's Nancy Dawson coming out of her house onto the porch like she's on a mission. What on earth got her out of the house? A grease fire? Come now, Nancy. You've planned through all of this. What are you waiting for, madam? This is some misadventure. Here goes nothing. Remember that you're here to meet Lois Chilton, not her brother Jake. I do hope that isn't the ghost. Hello? Is everything all right? That's a first. I couldn't even get them to open the front door. I should go home. Bat! Annex, the continuing story of a peculiar bend in the avenue. Traffic goes north, traffic goes south. The streetcar runs between, and all we can do is try to keep up. Maybe this old house can remain the neighborhood mystery after all. I'm gone. Oh, please don't run away. I feared I was disturbing a poltergeist at work. Oh, we just had a bat fly in through the kitchen window. Ma is one tough lady, but she is petrified of bats and was sure it was rabid. So she went after it pell-mell with a broom and put the broom through another window. 
What happened to the bat? Well, it flew out of the broken window with minor assistance from myself. I'm Lois Chilton, by the way. A pleasure to meet you, Lois. I'm Nancy Dawson. Welcome to the neighborhood. You have no idea, Donovan, how glad I am for this surprise afternoon visit you're making. You're surprised to see me, Diana? When we spend so much time together? I, hmm. Of course not, but just ahead of 3.30 on a Thursday afternoon and taking me for a stroll, no less. I begin to suspect that you're seeking my favor, Donovan. I had business out this way, commercial construction to the south. Which way are we strolling today? To the north, away from the lilac sanctuary. Mother's entertaining the scolds, and I'm avoiding her for the duration. I do something similar at Yuletide. Then lend me your arm, and we'll stroll north. Why, there's Mrs. Olivia Chilton, bustling out of her house and back across the street to her market. Opened less than a year ago, and her boy Jake helping her run the place. Hello, Olivia! Good afternoon, Diana. Thank you for your house tour. I'm amazed at what your mother and Jake did with it. Well, never underestimate the power of deep cleaning and paint and common sense. There's Diana, Black Widow, Putnam. And Donovan Shackelford. That's her beau. Good afternoon, Diana. Mr. Shackelford? Nancy? Diana's a dear, but she doesn't take me seriously, as I'm still in school, and she is, after all, a widow woman. Donovan, on the other hand, is dreadful. Just dreadful. He does appear rather lost in himself as they pass from our view. I've heard stories about him. My father's the editor of The Looking Glass. It's our progressive daily here in Harborview. He's taken an interest in Donovan Shackelford of late. Whatever for? Because he doesn't trust him. Nancy Dawson is a nice enough girl, but I find her melodramatic personality exhausting. Uh, she inherits that from her dunce father. Donovan, really? I'm oh, sorry. If you could live anywhere in the world, I do mean anywhere in the world, where would you choose? I would surely choose to live right here on Delaney Avenue. Among the lilacs and near you, my beloved. So we could stroll in this fashion every day for the rest of our lives. <laughs> well, that's an answer. I'd rather live anywhere but here. Well, another part of our fair city beckons you? No. Anywhere else but harbor for you or Oregon. Well, what of Washington? Or Washington. Nothing happens here. Donovan, I've spent my entire life wanting to live where, where things happen, where, where something could happen to me. My dear Diana, I'm sure that even if you never leave Harborview, you shall have plenty happen to you. Right here. Do you promise me that? Oh, cross my heart, Diana. Hope to die. It must feel a prison sentence. Living with my mother? Yes. She's impatient that I can't put a flower in my hat and snap my fingers and find another teaching situation just like that. The artist thing, she doesn't understand that any better. Maybe she just lacks the artistic sensibility. Oh, she has it. It just only pertains to my brother and his music. Jake is a musician? <laughs> Jake? No. We have another brother. Anyhow, 
I'm remiss as your host. Let me fetch us both some lemonade from the kitchen. I'll return. Just enjoy being outside in the blue sky. Winter is coming. This was once forbidding trees and brush. I'm glad the Chilton's have come here. I didn't know about the other brother. And where is... Hello. Oh, my. I'm Jake Chilton. Sorry if I scared you. You didn't scare me. You just startled me. I tend to have that effect on the girls around here. I missed your name. I didn't give it. I'm Nancy Dawson. I live across the street. I know. I see you've met my little brother. Jake, Nancy, Nancy, Jake. I was planning to introduce you kids. Thank you.